Welcome to another episode of RC Glider Basics on the Armstrong YouTube channel. I'm Thomas, and in today's video, we're going to talk about center of gravity or CG. If you've flown any sort of fixed wing RC plane, uh, whether it's a glider or powered, you'll probably already have some understanding of CG. And if you're new to RC flying entirely and CG just sounds like gibberish to you, don't worry, we've got you covered. In today's video, let's take a look at what CG is and how it's measured, why it's important for DLGs, what differences there are between a forward, neutral, or tail-heavy CG, and what it means to do a dive test. If you like this video, please remember to give it a thumbs up, and if you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you hit the big red subscribe button and notification bell icon so you don't miss any future videos. This lets YouTube know people found this video useful and makes it more visible to others who are also searching for DLG videos and tutorials. So what is the center of gravity or CG? It's the balance point of your glider. While the center of gravity does refer to the overall balance point, uh, both longitudinal and lateral, in our context, we're mainly referring to the longitudinal uh, or the front and back balance point. When you get a new model, the manufacturer will typically have a CG range for the model. For an example, on our Deviant 1 meter DLG, we recommend using a CG of 65 to 70 millimeters. And first, I would say start off with 65 millimeter spot for test flights and move back if necessary for your own handling preference. This reference point is measured on the bottom of the wing from the leading edge right by the fuselage. Personally, I like to measure my CG to an accuracy of around half a millimeter, so all my models fly as similarly as possible. And you know what else is accurate? The KST X08 and X06 servos. They're super small, light, and the entire thing is precision milled from aluminum for the maximum stiffness. The X06 has been all the rage this season, with many people choosing to use them in their 1 meter DLGs and 1.5 meter F5K models. Since they're wide voltage capable, you can run them directly on 1S in a DLG or 2S in an F5K electric ladder. And of course, with so many people clamoring for something really thin to make 4 servo wing DLGs, the X06H with the horizontal tabs and our matching servo frames are perfect for the role. For those in Canada or the US, Get them on armsorusa.com or armsor.com for the rest of the world. Back to the program. So just how important is the center of gravity? The CG is very important in any aircraft as it not only changes the handling characteristics of the plane, but if the CG is outside of the range, it can have catastrophic results. But it's even more important on gliders because not only does the CG affect how the plane handles, it also affects how the glider signals air around it to signal lift or sink. Having a forward CG means the glider will have a positive stability, or if left alone, it would find its own pace uh, in a calm, stable manner. Because it is more stable, it does mean it dulls out the air indications a little bit. If the glider is set up with a neutral CG, then the model will not correct itself in flight, which gives you potentially more feel for the air but does require more hands-on control of the sticks. And in gliders, we don't generally use a rearward CG behind a neutral point, as that brings us into negative stability territory. That's more reserved for planes with auto stabilization that needs extreme agility like fighter jets. So as you're reading online, you might've heard of a dive test that people recommend you to do uh, when playing with your CG and getting things trimmed out. The dive test is a simple exercise that can tell you if your CG is forward, neutral, or behind neutral. I like to use my dive test while in speed mode as a reference point, as that is the mode I use to fly at a higher speed when coming home from downwind. The first step of the dive test is to get the plane to a reasonable height and trim the elevator so that it flies in a nice level manner. Now that might take a couple flights to get trimmed out. Don't rush it, it's okay. Once it's flying nice and level, then push the model nose down roughly 45 degrees and let go of the sticks. Now, does the model start to curl up or it keeps its heading or does it start curling down? If it starts to pull up, that means it's a forward CG. And if it's pretty much consistent, then it's neutral. And if it starts to pull the nose more and more down, the CG is behind a neutral point. Yeah, if the plane pulls up, that means it's nose heavy. And the more nose heavy it is, the harder it'll pull up in a dive test. 
Counterintuitive, I know, but trust me, it does make sense. You see, when your nose heavy and you're trying to maintain a constant level flight, you'll naturally have the model set up with more up elevator. Once you put the model in a dive and the airspeed increases, the effect of the elevator with the up trim overcomes the constant force of gravity and it pulls the nose up. Likewise, if the model is tail heavy, you're gonna be dialing in a lot of down trim to keep the nose down for a constant level flight. So when you put it into a dive test and increase the speed and coupled with gravity, it'll push the nose down even more. Many expert pilots prefer to have their models flying quite neutral as it gives you the most direct control and feel of the model, kind of like driving a nimble manual sports car. Personally, I prefer a Grand Tourer, so I trim my models to have just a hint of pull up in speed mode or just slightly forward of neutral. So it's more stable and requires a bit less hands-on control when flying at distance. Now speed mode is the only regular flight mode where I dive and accelerate in. So I want it to mostly point where I want it to go. I don't dive test my models in cruise and thermal modes because those modes are trimmed for how they handle in level flight and in turns. If I were to dive test those flight modes, they'll pull up quite a bit. If you need a refresher on flight modes, be sure to check out our RC Glider Basics video on flight modes. I'll have it linked in one of the ending cards. As usual, I hope you enjoyed this episode and got something out of it. See you in the next video.